Hello everyone, DSO here from DadStartingOver.com and before we get started with today's episode, I wanted to get a couple of pieces of business out of the way. Number one, I sell books. You can find my books at DadStartingOver.com slash books. The books include my bestseller, The Dead Bedroom Fix. My second book is called Now What? A Guide for Men Starting Over in Life After Infidelity, Breakup, and Divorce. And my third and final book is called Red Flags. You can buy these all directly from my website and download directly from my website, or you can go to any of the major retailers. Second piece of business is that I have a members only part of my website called the DSO Fraternity. With the DSO Fraternity, you have access to all of my books in PDF and audio format. You also get access to members only articles and audio, and you're free to discuss those articles with fellow members on the website. And we also have DSO Fraternity live meetings via Zoom. In these live meetings, you are free to share your story and listen to advice from others. And on occasion, we will have a special guest, such as author Dr. Robert Glover of No More Mr. Nice Guy. So please check out the DSO Fraternity at dadstartingover.com slash join. Thank you so much, and on to the episode. Meet Eugene. Eugene will be the first to tell you that he doesn't have much luck with the ladies. In fact, for all intents and purposes, he is worthless in the mating game. For years, he has watched everyone else out there be happy and getting laid. He spends month after month, year after year, alone. No companionship. No intimacy. His very human needs are not being met. He's not dumb. He sees what it takes to get women attracted to him, but he feels it's just not worth the effort. He just wasn't made to be a lover. He's resigned himself to his lower status. But he still has needs. To relieve the tension, he has resorted to watching his hotter, more attractive friends have sex while he masturbates. That's right. Couples get naked and have crazy sex while he sits in the corner, hunched over, masturbating like a monkey. They never acknowledge his presence, let alone ask him to join in. He's basically invisible. He's cool with that. Everyone agrees on this arrangement beforehand. He finishes. It doesn't take long. He leaves. He may leave a little money on the way out the door. Usually not. He does this daily. Every single day he finds somebody to watch have sex. Sometimes it's the same couple. Sometimes he likes to mix it up. Maybe throw in a dwarf. Two or more women together. Or maybe some extreme bondage. His tastes seem to get more extreme as time goes on. There's never a shortage of people willing to help him out. After doing this for years, this has become his sole means of reaching orgasm. He can't do it any other way. This, my friends, is porn. When viewing porn, you are admitting your lower sexual status. You're throwing your hands up in resignation and saying, Okay, can I just sit here and pleasure myself while you way more attractive people do all the hard work? I won't bother you. It's like sexual welfare. Porn is like that two-way mirror that they use in police interrogation rooms. You're on one side jerking off while the hot people are on the other side having the time of their lives. They don't see you, but they know you're there. They even angle their bodies towards you to give you a better view. Then they'll laugh at you when you leave the building. He'll be back, they say. He always comes back. Pathetic. You are addicted. You can also think of porn as a drug. Like alcohol, some of us can have a little taste one night and forget about it for weeks or months at a time. It's just a social lubricant that makes things relaxing and fun. For some of us, we have a drink not just to unwind or hang out with friends, but to self-medicate. We have anxiety issues or insecurities that alcohol does a very good job of mending, at least temporarily. Booze saves you the hard work of dealing with your deep-seated issues like a grown-up. Why go through all the trouble of real introspection and therapy when you can have a few beers on a nightly basis? Everyone does it, right? The problem with booze is that it's okay in small doses, but can quickly lead to a huge number of problems if taken to the next level. Unfortunately, the next level is hard to define. It varies from person to person. Everyone with a drinking problem will tell you how it just snuck up on them one day, and they found out they couldn't function normally without it. Porn is the exact same way. With porn, you're avoiding dealing with the main issue that is staring you directly in the face. You're not getting laid. More specifically, you're not doing things necessary to get laid. Instead, you're just doing things to cause you to have an orgasm. There's a huge difference between having a real intimate relationship with another human being, even if maybe for just one night, and being hunched over in front of your glowing laptop. 
actual sex is the natural result of a fun and drawn out dating game of socializing with other people. You eventually allow enough trust and attraction to build up so that you get naked with another human and rub your dirty bits together. What's not natural is feeling that itch for intimacy, firing up your computer, and reaching orgasm within minutes. Your brain and body weren't set up for such an arrangement, much like eating Cheetos or drinking way too much vodka. Who is the typical porn consumer? As I see it, there are two kinds of regular porn users. Number one is the guy who says, I can't get sex. I need relief. Porn is a quick way to get what I need. I have grown accustomed to it. It's the same as having my morning cup of coffee. I'm legitimately addicted to porn. And number two is, I'm married or I have a girlfriend. I can get sex if I tried, but it's just easier to rub one out instead of going through all the trouble of being intimate with my partner. Yes, I use porn regularly, maybe even every day, but I don't have a problem. I have sex with my wife after all. Sometimes. Number two is becoming more and more common. These guys are like alcoholics in denial. They have a giant bottle of vodka hidden in their office and they don't think it's a big deal. Hey, everybody drinks, right? No, they don't tell their loved ones about it. And yes, they sometimes feel shame about it, but again, it's no big deal, right? Ask their partner if it's a big deal. There's a growing dead bedroom community of sex-hungry wives and girlfriends online crying about their men repeatedly turning them down for sex. What's most disturbing to them is that their man has a huge internet porn habit. The wife is told that he's just so tired from work and he can't think about sex. She then goes to his internet browser history and sees link after link of gangbang porn that he watched just 10 minutes ago. She's crushed. The quick drug of streaming porn gave him the relief that he desired, and now he no longer feels the need for the very real flesh and bone of the woman he loves. He has short-circuited his brain. His natural inclination is to find women and to try to have sex with them. Well, thanks to modern technology and the free market system, he has found a much easier way to achieve the same end result. He's able to skip steps A through Y and he jumps right to Z. And this is not a good thing. The gap between the guys at the top of the dude pyramid, you know, the ones who get all the girls, and those at the bottom is, is widening rapidly. There's a myriad of reasons why. Most men are out of shape, tired, uninteresting, and they lack the oomph they need to crawl up the ladder and better themselves. Porn is a huge component of why this is happening. Do you watch porn all the time? Well, congrats. You're Eugene. The porn producers are preying upon your human nature. They have engineered their product in a way that keeps you coming back again and again while they shove their dick-growing pill advertisements in your face. They know you're insecure and not getting any. They know precisely what buttons to push to get you coming back every day and possibly forking over a few bucks in the process. You're in the sub-basement level of the dude pyramid. You're down there with the degenerates and weirdos and social misfits that all of society says, Ew, go away, too. So cut this shit out of your life. Don't be another fucking Eugene. Be a man. And go get laid.